I'm at the peak of my breeding season. I really need to know, is she gonna give me eggs? Hey YouTube, Brown here with BBM Reptiles. Thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel. And if you're new, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and follow me along in this incredible journey of reptile keeping, specifically working with ball pythons. Guys, we're at the peak of my breeding season and I wanted to actually go through some of my experiences and more or less what I've noticed um, to give you an idea of what a breeding season consists. Now, um, I've had a female that actually reabsorbed. And even though we're in the middle of the season, I, I can't help but actually wonder why that happened. But knowing how far advanced, and that's the benefit of keeping most of your females and working through them, you get to the point that you get to know those females. And you know more or less the time and the temperament. And not only that, the development of past seasons of what it can actually look forward to on the following ones. So again, I'm going to go through a few charts. And I'm going to actually pinpoint the development of follicle growths and also the month-by-month -month displays of how those development actually goes through. Okay, now what I'm gonna go over is basically the development and the size of the follicles. And this is something basically that I actually wanna illustrate um, the size chart of what follicles are and um, what part of the season more or less is gonna go. And this is all going basically off of my experience. And I know a lot of times, a lot of people talk about that you can breed um, without an ultrasound. And it's true, there's a lot of breeders, including myself, I bred without an ultrasound. But because I just recently, I would say like basically three years, I've acquired an ultrasound machine, I've noticed the benefit of having it and letting me know how basically the, the female is developing um, within the stage of that breeding season. Now, when we're starting off in the season, basically a lot of females, they'll start off basically starting to grow their follicles between three to eight millimeters. Now this is typically the time that they're not actually ready to breeding because the female can go the whole season from 3.3 .3 to eight millimeters all the way to the end of the season and then reabsorb it. This is something that they usually do when um, they don't have a mate or a male present and basically if they just, just does not desire to breed that season. And a lot of times basically we hear that food is key and male placement is key for helping with the development of follicle growth. And that is true. But then again, that's the benefit of where the ultrasound actually comes in because you'll know if that female at, doesn't even decide to basically do the whole entire season, go beyond this, this growth right here. And even though there are breeders, those are seasoned breeders that actually they palpitate or they can feel on the bottom of the ball python and more or less judge the idea of the size. This is something that basically goes through years of experience of actually feeling it as they develop each and every season. And especially with those beginner breeders, um, you're not gonna be able to basically get that right dimension or the idea of what the size is. So as the female actually starts out between this time, um, that's something that I like to actually, at the beginning of the season, always use my ultrasound just to actually make sure that there, that follicles that there, I can actually see them. I can actually see the follicles, even if they're that small. I know that the follicles are there, and the females is at that point that she might be able to the point to start moving them up. Now, the next size of basically with the ultrasound is I start noticing a growth from that three to eight millimeters. It will start to grow from nine to fifteen millimeters. And that's, like I said, at the beginning of the breeding season. And that's when I want to start introducing my males for the very first time. Now, something that I personally do is when I have a first-time male, a juvenile male, a first-time breeding male uh, for the very first time, I like to actually take advantage of when that female is at that early stage that she's still not ready. But the thing is, is that male, it's giving that time for that male that I would like to place with that female um, at that earlier stage to see if that actually starts jump starting either the male or the female, either of either of the two, for the female to start developing the follicle growth and start growing it because she is seeing another male present. And it's also giving me that chance for that new male to basically see that there is a female available. And you start seeing, as a matter of fact, at the beginning of the season, that tail wagging, um, especially on that first time females or even seasoned females. But that's their sign, letting the male know that they are interested and she starts basically loosening out the pheromones or spreading out the pheromones within the, the environment. Now, um, like I said, that's the point that I like to introduce my males again 
as I'm using the ultra ultrasound machine, I am seeing the, the development and the stages of those follicles. Now, the follower stage of the development of the follicles is between 20 and 35 millimeters. Now, 20 and 35 millimeters, that's when the female is basically at the peak of the season. That's when that female is really, really at that point that she's growing and she wants to go that season. So I have to make sure that there's two important factors that I do not let up on. And one is food and two is the male placement, especially the male that I want to actually copulate with that female to get the cuts from that female. So this is the important part when the male, I mean, when the female is at this stage um, then I'm making sure that I'm getting in those final locks, making sure that I'm not letting off those feed, um, the feedings to guarantee that the female will continue on to the final point, which is basically ovulation. Now, I've had this situation, as a matter of fact, where I had a female, basically, as a matter of fact, in this season, I had a female that actually went all the way up to 18, close to 20. And in a few weeks later, because of that issue that I was talking about, the, the early males, um, she started actually going back. She was digressing. In other words, she started reabsorbing. And just recently, I noticed that it came to this point. She actually went down to the point that with the ultrasound machine, I did not see any follicles. And that again goes back to the point that I was talking about. Even though it's early in the season, right now, as I'm uploading this video, we're in March. And basically, this is the time that basically I would say is the, the peak of the season. But at this point, if for any reason that female does not feel it's comfortable for her to actually keep going, she will start basically start reabsorbing. And um, I will see that it won't pass that point. But usually at this point, basically, that's it's done. The job is done. Rarely, very rarely, you get a female that actually passes 40 millimeters and starts reabsorbing. That is like extremely rare because this is already to the point that the females are right to the point of ovulation. Now, ovulation basically means is at this point, she starts using the sperm from the males and this basically starts fertilizing those eggs. And that's when we start seeing a successful clutch. There is, there is the possibility of slugs or infertile eggs. But basically at this point, she's not turning back. She's not turning back. And this is the point that we want to look at. And... Um, that's the point when we'll start seeing a ovulation on the female, which is a large swelling. I'll explain that a little bit later um, in the video. But um, basically from this size, I'm going to show you another chart with my months, my personal months of how I had them and what stages I have noticed uh, the follicle development with each ones. Okay, again, going by my personal example, I just wanted to show you what I seen during my seasons of breeding, how my months actually work and what I seen within that time going by the follicle development chart i more or less basically put the months of what i expect to see or what i've actually seen again with my breeding seasons now my breeding season here where i live in puerto rico it basically starts all the way from october and basically it ends in june those are the months that i have now basically it's about six to seven months that i have of active copulation before i start seeing an ovulation now my because basically we're in a warm climate here so that's why i always say that it's not necessarily um my example is a guideline for other people because we have breeders worldwide uh but it's a guideline it's a guideline basically that you can actually see and more or less know what to expect now going back basically october even though october is basically the start of the season for me it's the month that i actually use to prepare um my breeding room basically I make sure that my breeding plan is already set up. I already know what males and females are going to go for the pairings. And October is the month that I use my first time males. Now, first time males is basically those males that I produce myself that they're breeding for the very first time or males that I acquired from another collection and that I'm actually introducing into my breeding plan. So I like to actually make sure that in the month of October is where I start basically start getting that first meet and greets. Even though I, I, I know there's not going to be any locks within those months, but it's a time that basically I'm preparing the environment for the season that I want to have it. Because remember, that first time male, it's going to take him a few months before he actually starts kicking in. And um, I want to make sure that he's already started and not placing him at the start of the breeding season when I expect him to breed. I want to make sure that I have him before that. Now, within that time, 
I don't expect any large growth of follicles. It's basically, like I said, it's the start of it. So which brings me basically into November. November is when I actually start officially start making my final pairings, or not my final pairings, but my final planning for my breeding plants during the whole entire remaining seven or six months. So within that time, that's when I thought I basically, I ultrasound my female for the very first time, just to have an idea at what stage the follicles are. Now at that time, that's when I usually expect the follicles to be within this size, three to eight millimeters. Again, obviously they're not ready at that time. They're not ready at that time, but I have to start to simulate or basically motivate the development of those follicles. Now, like I said, and I'm a very firm believer that the development of follicles can be basically motivated by two factors. One, actually it would be three factors, but then again, it could be even more factors. But the things that I personally notice is obviously food. If the female sees as a constant supply of food, she will not basically be worried about when she does produce a clutch, if there's gonna be issue when basically securing her line. That's one of the factors. The second one obviously is male placement. Now, I used to think that basically within a breeding, um, I would say colony, the other females would pick up from the other ones just because, oh my God, that dog. Give me one second. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> In my other videos, I would have to have roosters in the background. Now I got a howling dog. And it's like in the, it's early in the day. Anyway, <laughs> going back to this. We're in November. And like I said, this is the time that basically we will see the start of the follicles were within three to eight millimeters. And this is the month that I actually um, ultrasound for the very first time. So again, I'm trying to stimulate the development of the growth of those follicles. So... Going on to December, this is basically when I ultrasound again, and I'm noticing that the size is going to start to increase to the size that is acceptable that the female wants to start breeding. Now, that basically is anything over 10. So basically, between December, that's when I see a growth between 9 or possibly even to 12 of the millimeters, the size of the follicles through the ultrasound. So... Again, going back, I want to make sure that female develops and goes even farther with the growth. So I'm making sure that I'm make, making sure that she's not missing a meal, and the male is constantly seeing that female within a reasonable time um, to give that male a rest. But it's important because those are the two factors that I really do consider is important for the development of follicles is food and the male placement to make sure that it actually starts growing. Now. We're going to January, and th again, this is my ex my example, and this is what I've noticed. This is the peak of the season. This is the peak of the season where I am, and basically, the female is really, really starting to gear up, and her follicles are starting to grow, and I have seen within this time, the follicles actually start raising up from 12 to basically 18 millimeters. Even though I have 12 to 15, but the, 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 um, the tracking of most of my females... They might go a little bit beyond that, but the important thing is that they grew from the nine or even from the eight the months previous. So I know that the, the placement and the food of the male is stimulating that growth of the follicles. And like I said, it's the top of the season. Now we go into February. In February, here where I live, it's when it's the most, it's the, the, the heaviest time of the year where we get the most rain. And rain, I don't know what specific it does, but it basically kicks the ball pythons into high gear, especially those first-time males. That's when I start seeing those first-time males actually starting making their first-time copulations. Remember, what I was doing is since October, I am preparing not only the females, because I do have my females, especially the ones that gone seasons prior, I'm not going to have a, an issue knowing when they're going to start growing their follicles. But the males, especially the first ones, those are the ones that, be, that are being extremely timid or I would say a little bit held back from actually start copulating. So since I started placing as early as in October, I have seen not only because the combination of the rainy season, but because he has been placed various times with the females, by February is when I start seeing that male actually starts lurking, locking with the females for the very first time. And because, going back to what I was talking about, the placements, because the female has been seen that the male's been placed constantly and constantly, she knows there is a male. So that is also stimulating her growth to the point 
that I expect or I have experienced, not that expect, but I have experienced the follicles at this time to be reaching from 18 all the way up to 25. And um, like I said, this is the peak. Even though I said January, January for me is the peak of the season when I expect the follicles to be at that point that now I really, really have to kick it into high gear to make sure I'm not falling back on the placement of the meals of the females, which now basically brings me into March, the month of March, which is right now. And as I ultrasound my females, I already noticed most of the females are already within the 27 millimeters um, range. So this is what I expected, but what I personally right now going through with this season, I'm already hitting at the 28 millimeters. So by March, this is the, the basically the, the point that the female for me is already at the point that she's really, really anticipated. And I do expect that I will be seeing um, development of those follicles to the point of ovulation. Um, again, at the same time, I've also noticed that I have some females, especially one that got to the point that she did reach up to 20 millimeters and now she started reabsorbing. And she went to the point that she went to nine to the point that she reabsorbed it completely. And I can't even see any follicles. So basically she started reabsorbing. And the reason of that is basically, this is the problem that I was talking about first time males. I had a male pastel gravel head clown, first time male that I produced myself. And I was pairing it with my female clown. Now this male was actually taking a while to start locking up. And like I said, by by january was it when he was started uh basically lock up with the other females um but that other female because she is an early layer for me she actually giving me clutches early as may um she got to that point of basically reaching 18 by january but because that male was not locking with her she started reabsorbing and i noticed that and basically as far as a month i'm down to zero so she basically reabsorbed because that male did not actually go by her schedule when she wanted to go. So, um, but I did get locks with other females with that male. So um, I was still lucky enough because basically most of the females were just starting to build at this stage. That example that I used that reabsorbed, she was already at 18 in December. In December, she was already in 18. So um, that male reabsorbed, that female reabsorbed. Now, again, this is development month, which is in March. Now we're in April. April and May are the months that I consider like the final locks. Those are the last times because at that time, within April and May, the female is within, within at least 25 um, up to 40. 25 into 40 within April. And then May is the months that I would see the beginning of an ovulation. Now, the beginning of an ovulation is anything beyond 40. Anything beyond 40 is the beginning of ovulation. That's something we have to look out for. And um, within these months, I already know that once the female already reaches 40 millimeters, there's no more need to place that male with that female. There's no more need because basically she, she, he did what he had to do. And if that female gets to the point that she does fertilize the, the eggs with the ovulation and I'm still pairing the male, there is that chance that that female, even though she ovulated, any further breeding or pairing that I put that male to that female Besides the point, it'll be useless because the female already ovulated. Um, she could retain those sperms. And then there is that possibility that the following season, when I try to pair that male, a different male to that one female, she might actually hold on to that sperm from the male from the season prior. And then I would have a clutch that I won't be able to identify specifically and especially if I'm working recessive projects. So by May, like I said, this is the time that basically it's my cutoff point. It's my cutoff point and the importance of having the ultrasound machine to the point that I know at what point that the female is about to ovulate so I don't have to continue pairing that male with that female. Again, seasoned breeders can actually feel the females and get an idea of the development or the size of the follicles or even by, by visual inspection, you can see that swollen. But we're not talking about seasoned breeders. We're talking about people that are starting for the very first time, second time, third time, fourth time. Because it'll take you a while to get that eye. And until you get there, you don't want to actually, you know, overwork your males knowing that you still have a chance with other females that still has not reached the 40 area and are still basically between 18 or 20 or 30. They're in that range because... This guideline is just that, a guideline. It basically explains more or less 
the months that I've actually seen and witnessed um, the stages of the females, but I will have females that will start out in three to eight millimeters in November all the way up to April, and then April, boom, just to say, explode and go up to 30. And go up to 30, and knowing that I have an ultrasound machine, I can still pair it and take advantage of the last month because anything after June, especially where I live, it gets extremely hot. And there is no way that even with the copulations, the sperm plugs, or, I'm sorry, all the sperms will be viable because they'll be too warm and um, it won't be able to take advantage of that. That's not going to, nothing from my past experience. I've never bred anything after that because the temperatures over here are extremely high. I mean, like, there's no way I can control the environment unless I have AC. And that's not something I work with. I, I don't control my environment. I work off an ambient environment, actually, to continue working my breeding progress. And like I said, um, once I hit June, breeding is done. My breeding season is done. And it's a matter of basically 45 to 50 day countdown that I have to see the eggs. Now, ovulation, and this is usually how it works. As soon as you see an ovulation on a female, again, it's after 40 millimeters. 40 millimeters, you're going to notice that large swell. And this is something I forgot to mention. Going back to the final locks, when you get the female in the development months, that basically she's already passed 28 millimeters, that's usually the time when she starts getting off food. That's when she stops feeding. So anytime she's by 25 and over, she doesn't have room for the meals, and that's another sign that you can actually know that the female is at that point that she's getting to a larger girth to the point that she could reach ovulation because she doesn't have size or room for the meals. So once you actually do see an ovulation, um, you know basically because your snake has not fed um, for two, three, four, five, six weeks. You haven't seen your snake feeding, and all of a sudden she balloons up like she swallowed a large rat. That's an ovulation that usually lasts within 24 hours. After you see ovulation, that's something you want to jot down because 15 days after that, she's going to go into pre-late shed. And 15 days to the calendar after she has a pre-late shed, 30 days after that day, you would expect to see eggs. So that's why I say basically it's a 45 to 50 day countdown until you start seeing eggs after the point of the female reaches that ovulation point. Well, guys, there you have it. That's basically my experience of what I expect to see or what I've experienced within my breeding seasons. Just to give you an idea of what to expect, like a guideline, to basically help you further your path and journey to a successful breeding season. Guys, thank you again for taking the time for stopping by my channel. And again, if you're new, go ahead and stop by my channel. Hit that subscribe button. Follow me along in this incredible journey of reptile keeping. And until the next time, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, <laughs>